down with the Lucasfilm Story Group's Rain Roberts. Lucasfilm gets taken over by puppies and much, much more. Now, from the Lucasfilm headquarters, it's the Star Wars Show. Hello, I'm Peter Townley, hosting Solo this week because Andy Gutierrez is on vacation. Nope, I'm here. Oh, whoa! How are we doing this? Internet magic. I thought you were on vacation. Star Wars never takes a vacation, and neither do I. Let's go to the news. This is freaking me out, Andy. It'll be fine. I just, I can put my hand through you. Don't do that. It's okay. I'm gonna start doing the news now. All right, yeah, sure. Last night, a team of Star Wars superfans decided to go rogue, revealing the new toy line for Rogue One via a series of animated shorts. The shorts, created by James DeHulio, written by Kevin Ulrich, and animated by Dan McKenzie and Tucker Berry, follow the adventures of Rogue One toys, as the Empire has misplaced the building instructions for the LEGO Star Wars Death Star set, sparking a galaxy-wide search to recover them. The series, which began today, will continue to roll out in September on our YouTube channel. And as an added bonus, we want you, the fans, to participate. Starting September 30th, fans can create their own Go Rogue shorts and skits set inside the Star Wars galaxy, where the winning shorts will be invited to Lucasfilm headquarters in San Francisco for a screening of Rogue One as well as seeing their video on the big screen. For more details and rules, head to StarWars.com slash Go Rogue. While we're on the subject of Rogue One, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes will also be getting Rogue One content this month. Take, for example, the Scarif Rebel Pathfinder, which will be available as a daily login reward beginning tomorrow. All you have to do is log in tomorrow, September 1st, and every day through September 30th. Additionally, more Rogue content will be coming to Galaxy of Heroes from now until the film's release in December, so stay tuned. In other news... Huh, I guess we lost Andy for a second, so, so I'll do this one too. We here at the Star Wars show are also going to reveal a brand new character from Rogue One, an Imperial astromech droid by the name of C2B5. Now, as you may know, the Galactic Empire relies on astromech droids to maintain its machinery, but unlike the Rebel Alliance, Imperial technicians do not grant their droids independence and subject them to frequent memory wipes to keep them subservient. Where does C2B5 fall into all this? Well, you'll have to find out this December when Rogue One is released. This week also saw the release of the complete second season of Star Wars Rebels. The disc comes packed with bonuses like the Blu-ray exclusive From Apprentice to Adversary, Vader vs. Ahsoka, where Dave Filoni talks in depth about the climactic season finale. Also included is Connecting the Galaxy, a look at all of the hidden references and Easter eggs to Star Wars in the show. Oh, and also season two of Rebels Recon hosted by Andy. I'm back. what I miss? It's just me doing the rest of the news. Oh, huh. Guess I'll have to watch the episode to find out what I missed. Should I close? Please. For more breaking news from around the galaxy, be sure to check out StarWars.com. This is still freaking me out. We'll be right back. Hey guys, we are out here at one of Lucasfilm's newer but much loved employee events, affectionately known as Puppy Day, where local shelters bring dogs to come and be a form of therapy for people, get them away from their desks for a little while, and hopefully find these dogs a forever home. Karen, can you tell me a little bit about how this began? My husband and I started Orphan Dog in 2004 because it was a problem that we could solve that was in our own backyard. The dogs get a lot out of this. They get out for the day, they get to play, they get to meet a ton of people. They have an excellent time. We just found him, but we're never giving him back. Never giving him back. We're good at likes grass. Yeah. Not so good at walking. He hasn't completed his training. No. No, 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 no. He's still a paddle on. So if anybody watching this wants to adopt one of these dogs, how can they go about doing that? Go to orphandog.org or simply orphan.dog. We have an event every Saturday where we're out adopting dogs. So as you can see, Puppy Day is the absolute best day here at Lucasfilm. It's a hit with the people, it's a hit with the dogs, and they love the Star Wars toys. And quite frankly, I'm wasting my time here. There's puppies to pet. Hi, I'm Anthony Daniels, and you are watching the Star Wars show. I'm here with Rain Roberts, creative executive at Lucasfilm and member of the Lucasfilm Story Group. Thank you so much for coming back to the show. Thanks for having me. As a development executive, you are you are with a film from the very beginning all the way to the very end. Mm -hmm. For The Force Awakens, were there any big surprises or things that were constantly changing over the course of the whole film or things that you always knew you wanted? I remember the day we were here with Michael Arn and Carrie and everyone talking spitballing ideas and 
Michael and I just had a moment where we were like, what if Luke isn't in the movie? What, what if he's not, what if he's what everyone's looking for? And he was like, oh my God, oh my God, yes, that's it. And then we were like, we said it the same time. We're like, and then at the end, everyone would get to Luke Skywalker. And we were like, yes, that's it. JJ was in LA, so he wanted to pitch it to JJ. Mm -hmm. And JJ loved it. And it was one of those things that kind of stuck. And it was really cool that we just kind of all had that moment together. Are there other things about the, the story of Star Wars that you find to be key to it? that really makes Star Wars what it is. The notion that there's this invisible energy field or this force surrounding us and penetrating us that kind of influences everything that we do. And there is a very real thing about that notion that I think is really powerful. And along with that, the notion that we can all tap into that, that it's not exclusive to anyone. It's like, what? who am I? What do I do with this? And how do I relate to other people now? And I feel like that's also a really um, relatable thing that happens in real people's lives. It's not necessarily like wielding the force, but coming into something or coming into a time in your life or a purpose in your life and questioning what do, what do I do with this or how do I move forward and how do I relate to everyone else. And as you discover your t talents, it changes the way not only that other people look at you, but the way that you look at yourself. Exactly. This is like what it's like in our story meetings, yeah. essentially. <laughs> like we go on and on about all these esoteric existential things like for hours. The visual design of Star Wars 2 is is something that's really incredible. You can take pretty much any frame and it's just beautifully yeah. composed. Yeah. You know. It's something that's really remarkable all of the all of the very deliberate thought that goes into the to the making of these films. Absolutely. I mean, and Rogue One 2 is like even is going to do that as well. It's so exciting watching that process. Gareth is really interested in storyboarding and concept boarding and he had a great team of guys he would work with to kind of figure out what some of the visual touch points would be um, in the film when we were uh, shooting and we had um, an ama amazing director of photography, Greg Fraser. The film is so beautiful. He shot on this really cool new camera, an Ari Alexa 65 millimeter digital camera and the color palette he used and I could go on and on. It's just yeah. all, and then obviously what ILM is doing um, on their end and with John Knowles' team um, and Nigel, there it's just all of it is so beautiful. Thanks so much for being on the show, Raina. I really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. This is yeah, really fun. This is a lot of fun. Well, that's our show this week. I don't know if Andy is going to show up again. So, hey. ah, would, oh, would you stop doing that? Oh, it's so funny. All right, here we go. Last week, we asked to see your LEGO creations, and boy, did you deliver. We got custom LEGO BB-8s, a custom speeder for Sabine, portraits made of LEGO, a giant 10,000 brick Millennium Falcon. Darth Brick 26 on Instagram made a custom inside and outside version of Starkiller Base, whereas LEGO Spencer 11 made a custom LEGO Resistance Base. But if we're being honest, our favorite was the mouse droid that Blue Artem created for obvious cheese-related reasons. So this week, in honor of the new Rogue One toys, we want to see your most treasured Star Wars toy. It can be a beat-up Chewbacca, a Luke with all the paint played off, as long as it's a well-loved toy, we want to see it. Send it using the hashtag Star Wars Toy Story and we'll feature our favorites here next week. And as always, make sure to check out the Star Wars After Show presented by Verizon, where this week I'm hosting instead of Hologram Andy. Aww. Check it out this Thursday and every Thursday on youtube.com slash Verizon. Also, while you're here, like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Google+, like us on Facebook, subscribe to Vine, and download the Star Wars app. Thanks for watching. Are you going to be a hologram forever? Tune in next week to find out. Dun, dun, dun!